Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say a very heartfelt thank you to all of those of you who have been following me and who have encouraged me when at times I've felt discouraged about my work. And I have just noticed that um, I have more than 100 followers. And that to me is astounding. Like I, I can't even believe that so many of you would go on this journey with me. And I thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I just can't even begin to tell you how that makes me feel. I'm just honored beyond belief that you would want to even follow me. So um, I would love to soon have a giveaway for those of you who have been so wonderful to follow me. I am working on what the prize will be. And it's not going to be right away, right away, because I want to make sure that it's good, uh, whatever it is. Uh, but just know that that's coming. And um, seriously, without you guys, I don't know that I would have come as far as I have. Um, Story-wise, story development and character development and just the skills that you acquire in this hobby. Again, thank you so, so much. And be expecting a giveaway sometime soon. I will give you more info on that as time goes. And now I want to share something very special with you. And that is Harriet's introductory story. For a wonderful time If you're blue and you don't know where to go to Why don't you go where Harlem sits Putting on the red the background of the story is this. The music led him there, playing on an old phonograph that bloomed out like a giant bronze flower. It was Putting on the Ritz, first introduced by Harry Richman in film. The year is 1930, and Harriet is 14 years old. Through the window of a darkened alley street, he saw a girl, elegant, silent, demure. She was sitting quietly in an old, dark green, distressed wooden chair. Her hands were an elegant porcelain white and wrapped around each other tightly. She softly breathed in and out, an almost undetected rising and fall of her chest. She seemed to be thinking deeply about something. Her gentle blue eyes looked kind but sad. A single tear escaped her cheek. She wasn't plain and she wasn't overly beautiful, but there was something about her that drew him in. She was lovely. It seemed a strange juxtaposition. The bright and cheerful music which led him there mixed with such a scene as this. It wasn't until the sound of a knock that came from her door when she quickly wiped away that single tear and tried to get up that he saw her failing her short skirts revealed weakness and deformity. Thin sheets of metal bound around each leg like a prison stretched down from her knees all the way to where they were firmly fastened to the heel of her boots. Her left leg was stubbornly curved despite the efforts of the metal and smaller in proportion to the rest of her body. This child had been the victim of the polio epidemic in 1916. Though Flynn didn't know much about such things, of the whys and the winds, he immediately found resolve within himself. He waded past the glistening yellow lights that cascaded from her window onto the dampened street until not another soul was around. That is when he made his first appearance. For a wonderful time If you're blue and you don't know where to go to Why don't you go where Harlem sits Putting on the red